our heavenly father and our lord and savior jesus christ uh, for giving this uh, wonderful opportunity to share his wonderful words of life uh, uh, to you especially the brethren uh, oh, so far but at uh, so zealous in the lord dear uh, uh, brothers and sisters uh, in christ uh, today our subject uh, will be based upon uh, the bitter herbs so we all know that uh, since a uh, few days uh, uh, we have been meditating upon the lord's uh, memorial supper and uh, by god's grace uh, the coming uh, april 21st uh, all the brethren uh, will be participating in the lord's memorial uh, and especially you the new brethren from the solomon island uh, will be joining uh, for the first time uh, in uh, commemorating our lord's uh, death uh, so dear brethren if you read uh, the context that is mentioned about the lord's uh, memorial we know very well that the lord's uh, memorial was actually a new passover law which was actually originally celebrated uh, in the uh, old testament uh, but using a physical lamb uh, to be started in a particular way and to be roasted and to be ate along with herbs uh, we all know that uh, this uh, passover lamb actually typified our lord jesus christ and there was one thing that is mentioned in the old testament how the passover lamb has to be uh, you see partaken how do you eat that uh, passover lamb let us read exodus 12 chapter verse 8 and 9 Can somebody read it or shall I read? Yes, brother. I'll read, brother. Exodus okay. twelve eight. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with the fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Oh. Thank you, sir. It says uh, they shall roast and eat it with unleavened bread and the bitter herbs. Sir. Dear brethren, uh, we can understand the concept of uh, eating it with, uh, you see, unleavened bread. You see, but why these bitter herbs uh, is given here? Will somebody eat something bitter uh, when you're eating a very good uh, meal? No, but it says, uh, eat the lamb with the bitter herbs. Today, we are going to concentrate on these bitter herbs. Why these bitter herbs? You see, we all know very well. You see that uh, the bitter herbs always signifies the bitter uh, experiences in our life, uh, the bitter sufferings in our life. Uh. Dear brethren, uh, we know we all have consecrated uh, to the Lord. You see, and sometimes uh, some experiences in our life uh, are too bitter for us. Uh. We question the Lord why these bitter experiences. Uh, <laughs> see there are a lot of incidents uh, when it comes in our life we question the lord whenever god takes our loved ones we ask the oh lord why have you taken our loved ones why have you separated them from us shall any that go down to the dust uh, praise thee when everybody scolds against us and we are disgraced we ask the lord why when we are in sorrow and there is none to comfort us and uh, none to help us we again ask the lord why isn't it dear brethren so when we are cheated in spite of sincerity we feel in our heart why oh lord when our prayers are uh, unanswered in spite of crying to the lord day and night uh, we sometimes in frustration ask the lord why my prayers are not answered o oh lord why this bitter herbs in our life 
we even tend to feel uh, that God has rejected us and forsaken us. Uh, and we are almost on the path of the second death. Uh, and question God, why are you hiding uh, your face from me, O oh Lord? In trouble, uh, why are you far from helping me? Dear brethren, when God's hand is severe upon us, uh, when his trials is too much for us to bear, uh, we ask the Lord, why this chastisement, why this bitter herb, O oh Lord? How long uh, shall thy wrath burn against me? Where is the grace? Uh, why this bitter herb? When we don't get what we want, uh, when others get whatever they want, again the same question passes to our mind. Why? Why? Why this bitter herb? Dear brethren, when those who least sacrifice to the Lord, when those who are least faithful to the Lord are, when they flourish, you see, while there seems to be no value for our uh, sacrifice, our dedication, we again have the same question in our mind. Why, 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 Lord? Dear brethren, all this and many more questions, actually, you see, it comes to our mind. Why, 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 why? That is the reason the title of this subject is www.god. Why, when, where, what? Dear brethren, now, is it good to question the Lord? Can we question the Lord? You see, such type of questions definitely comes to everybody. There is nobody who is exception. Everybody, all the dear brethren who are consecrated, who have the trials in the life, who feel that the trials are severe sometimes in the life. You see, this question definitely pops up in their mind, though they are not willing to, you see, encourage or entertain such questions. Now, first of all, is there anything wrong in questioning God if you see? No. There is nothing wrong in questioning the Lord. Jesus says in Matthew 7.7, 7, Ask and you shall be given unto you. You see, seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. You see, God himself tells, uh, you see, knock, ask. David, even in uh, the Old Testament, Isaiah 1.18, you see, our Lord said, uh, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. He told, come. Let us reason. So God is encouraging the brethren, you see, to bring their questions, to discuss, to open their hearts with the Lord. You see, and in Isaiah 41, 21, the Lord says, bring forth your strong reasons. Dear brethren, if there are so many verses in the Bible, you see, where we are encouraged to question, it surely encourages that there is nothing wrong in questioning the Lord. Okay. Has anybody questioned the Lord in the Old Testament? You see, has anybody asked the Lord why all these things? Why, what, how, when? They asked. Yes. They were many of the faithful, uh, you see, warriors, the ancient, uh, you see, warriors, they have questioned the Lord. You see, Job, has he questioned the Lord? Yes. When he was uh, in bitter experiences, you see, he questioned the Lord. Some of the verses uh, I just quote, you can read it later. You see, because there are a lot of verses. Job 7, chapter 21st verse. Job 3rd, chapter 11th verse. You see, Habakkuk also questions the Lord. In Habakkuk 1, 3. Moses you see, in Exodus 5th chapter 22 was uh, Gideon. Judges 6th uh, chapter 13 verse, you see, and uh, even David. Even David, he questions the Lord. You see, we all know one of the faithful king of Israel was David. One of the favorite uh, of the Lord's uh, was David. 
David was called as the beloved of God. You see, the Bible says he was a man after God's own heart. Read Acts 13 chapter. Read Acts 13 chapter verse 22. Acts 13, 22. Yes, brother. <clears throat> and when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave their testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Go over. Thank you, sir. So it says, uh, David was a man after God's own heart. That means uh, his uh, heart condition was the same that was with God. And uh, we all know that it pleased the Lord to anoint David as a king. This uh, favorite king, David, he questions the Lord. Uh, you see, dear brethren, uh, you see, he says, uh, in Psalms 42.9. Sister, Psalms can you read uh, Psalms 42.9? Yes, brother. Psalms 42.9. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppress oppression of the enemy? You see, he questions God. Uh, huh? Saying, uh, why hast thou forgotten me, Lord? You see, David had so much of experience, uh, sometimes he felt uh, as if God has forsaken him. Uh. Dear Budren, he questions the Lord. Uh. Similar to Dear Budren, when uh, we are in sorrow and there is none to comfort or help us, we ask the Lord, why as though forgotten me? You see, similarly, David also questioned God. Uh. And again, Read Psalms 10 1. Psalms 10 1. Why standest thou afar, afar off, O Lord? Why hiddest thou thyself in times of trouble? See, when expected help does not come to ask, we ask the same question to the Lord. Why? Why, Lord, uh, you see, Standing very far. When we are in trouble, why don't you come and help us immediately? Even uh, David does the same thing. Why are you hiding thyself? Read Psalms 22 2. Psalm 22 2. Oh my Lord, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and I am not silent. Devdren, he cried day and night, uh, but there was no answer for his prayers. Similarly, you see, Devdren, when sometimes our prayers are unanswered in spite of crying day and night, uh, you see, we also feel and became frustrated. Uh, you see, and we, we, we question the Lord, saying, you see, as if God is sleeping. Read Psalms 44:23. Psalm 44.23 Awake, why sleepest thou, O Lord? Arise, cast us not off forgiven forever. You see, David is asking the Lord, Why are you sleeping, Lord? Does our Lord sleep? Same uh, David said in Psalms uh, 121, that He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. But here, there was so much... Uh, in trial, uh, bitter experience, uh, you see, he questions the Lord saying, uh, Lord, why are you sleeping? Please wake up. Uh, cast us not forever. You see, dear brethren, these are uh, same experiences which we undergo. Read Psalms 22, 15. Psalms 22, 15. My strength is uh, dried up like a and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. 
You see, to who has brought me to where? To death. The reason for my death is who? As if he is blaming God. Read Psalms 88, uh, 14, sister. Yes, brother. Psalms 88, 14. Lord, why castest thou of my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? You see, why have you cast me off? Why are you hiding your face? Where is thy grace? Where is thy mercy? Read Psalms 88, 10 also. Psalms 88, 10. Will thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? You see, when God's hand is severe upon us in frustration, we also ask, How long shall thy wrath burn against me? Similarly, David felt the same. Read Psalms 8946. Psalms 8946. How long, Lord, wilt thou hide thyself forever? Shall, why, shall thy wrath burn like fire? You see, how much time you will be far from me, that you will be hiding from me? How long shall the wrath be upon me? You see, dear brethren, even David's musician, Asap, he also, you see, had the same experience. Now, he shares some of the beautiful things in uh, Psalm 73, verse uh, 25. 73, 25. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. You see, the question is, whom do I have? You see, there's none for me. Nobody is there with me. I am alone. Whom do I have, Lord, in heaven and earth? Where shall I pour my heart? You see, there's no other option for me. To have mercy. Show the grace. You see, read Psalm 77 chapter, verses 2 to 4. Yes, brother. Psalm 77, 2 to 4. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I ah, complained. You see, David says, you see, the psalm, the psalmist, the musician says, I remembered God and was troubled. You see, when we are in trouble, when we... You see, remember God, that is the time we are comforted. But here, see the reaction. It says, whenever he was troubled, he remembered God. He was much disturbed, it seems. He was not comforted. That is the bitter experiences, dear brother. That is the trials. Next, sister, continue. Yes, brother. And my spirit was overwhelmed. Thou holdest mine eyes walking, mm. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. You see, the Lord... what is it? You are holding my eyes, you see, and I am so troubled that I cannot speak. He blames the Lord for his sleepless nights. You see, dear brethren, and uh, he cannot speak. Uh, he is not able to express it. He tells you are the cause for all of these things. Then continue, sir. Huh? Sister, continue. Yes, brother. Speak. Sorry. Will will the Lord cast off forever, and will He be favorable no more? Is His mercy clean gone forever? Doth His promise fail for ever evermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath He is anger shut up His tender mercy? Hmm. You put lot of questions. Is God favorable no more? Is His mercy gone? Is His promise failed? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has He shut up His tender mercies? Dear brethren, after putting all the questions, 
He gives a solution also. Why he is telling these things to God? You see, that is given in verse 10, 11 and 12. Read, sir. Complete your brother. Verse 10, 11, 12. Yes, brother. On here, I'll check it, brother. Ten. Okay. Ten. And he yes, says, sir. verse 10, and are you, you reading? Okay, read, sir. please read. No long. And I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the ears of the right hand of the Most High. 11. Mm -hmm. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely, I will remember thy wonders of old. Thank you, sir. So, it says, uh, the reason why is questioning God, that this is my infirmity. This is my weakness. I am still in the flesh. What else can we do? Dear brethren, you see, it is because of our weakness that we question the Lord. When this bitter cup, you see, is pressed to our lips, sometimes we feel and question God. Really, brethren, but our intention is not to, you see, blame God, but to seek the answers from the Lord. You see, and he also gives uh, the solution, how to overcome it. He says, I will remember the works of the Lord. You see, I will remember the works of old. I will meditate uh, upon it. Uh, this is the solution, dear brethren. When we have such a uh, bitter uh, experiences in our life, you see, that is the time that uh, we need to count uh, the blessings of the Lord. There is a song, uh, count your blessings, name them one by one. You see, and all the doubts uh, and all the fears, uh, it will flee away, dear brethren. So, when uh, we question the supreme power of God, you see, it is only because of our weakness, uh, but at that moment, uh, let us pause for a few seconds uh, and uh, remember the things which the Lord has done. Dear brethren, now what we saw was the example of David and uh, the musician Asap uh, questioning God. But uh, did our Lord Jesus ever question his father? You see, did Jesus question God? Yes. Jesus also questioned God in Matthew 27, 46. Jesus cried loudly and said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Did God really forsake Jesus? Yes, dear brethren, Jesus was actually forsaken on the cross. He was left to die because Jesus had to take the place of a sinner. And uh, if he has to take the place of a sinner, he has to be separated from God. He has to be isolated from God. And God hid this experience from Jesus at the last moment. The last moment when he was forsaken, Jesus, uh, it was very difficult for him to, you see, digest this one. Hence, uh, with a loud voice, he asked, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? He could not bear it. Hence, uh, the Bible says that Jesus died of a broken heart. Therefore, dear brethren, even Jesus, you see, has actually questioned God. Bible says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. That promise is actually for the church. God had never told that Jesus would never be forsaken. Dear brethren, so Jesus, he was made sin for us. You say, therefore, dear brethren, so Jesus also questioned God. If Jesus himself has questioned God, we can really rest assured that there is nothing wrong in questioning God. So then, dear brethren, why all these trials? Okay? Why these bitter experiences? What the Bible says, we will seek the answer for it today. Okay? Let us read Matthew 7, chapter 13 and 14. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Enter A in at the straight gate. 
for wide is the gate and broad is the way and leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in there it because the straight is the gate the narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few where be that find it there here find it. jesus tells about uh, two ways we have studied this one in the basic class you see the broad way leading to destruction and the narrow way leading to life the narrow way is so difficult that uh, even if it is found not many can walk in it you see now first of all is it fair that god create uh, a broad way uh, going to destruction and the narrow way leading to life dear brethren you see usually nobody does that one you see we have expressed highways in your place and uh, everybody's place uh, now is it done it's a very broad way that goes to actually your life everybody will leave it uh, and nobody would construct a small and narrow way that everybody will walk uh, you see dear brethren but why god has done this one why god has made this way so narrow that uh, only few be found it and only a few can walk in it uh. now what is the reason you see so to understand this we need to understand the life uh, which the narrow way leads to what is the meaning of that life which the narrow way leads to you see dear brethren there are different levels of uh, life like uh, you see angels have a life on the angelic level and uh, there is a life for mankind human being on the human level you see on the ground level and if you see below man there is a life for animals also you see but above all uh, you see dear brethren there is uh, a life where god himself is there so all this is life you see animals have life human beings have life angels also got life but uh, the life which the narrow way leads to is none of this it speaking about the life on the divine nature which god himself is having you see the nature which god himself is having the plane of immortality that divine nature where death itself is no more where death itself is impossible a plane where there is no sickness pain suffering sorrow where somebody doesn't need any support to live on a nature you see where they have life within themselves a self existing immortal plane this is the divine nature dear brethren when narrow way says it leads to life it is speaking about this immortal life where there is no death at all even if you want death death won't be possible on that plane okay now god in his plan you see decided to give this divine nature to somebody and when he decided uh, you see that uh, to give this uh, nature to somebody you know god decided that nobody can be given this nature without first being tested you see without testing somebody god decided no nobody could be given this divine nature why because god had created angels on the angelic plane and then put them to test where they failed similarly god created human being on the human plane you see and after creating he put them to trial to prove their latest to prove their loyalty and faithfulness what happened man sinned against god but the same process could not be adopted for a new creation that is coming of the divine nature why because the speciality of the divine nature is uh, immortality so if somebody is created on the immortal plane you see and then given test and if he fails in the test dear brethren that uh, new creature will be a immortal transgressor immortal transgressor means 
he will be a sinner against God, but he will have immortality. Imagine, and God himself cannot destroy that immortal person because there are two things which God cannot do. That's what the Bible says. One is that he cannot lie. And the second thing is that he cannot break his promise. These are the two things which God cannot, uh, you see, do. So once he has promised and given the divine nature, the immortal to somebody, he can't take it back if they commit sin. God is bound by his own law of justice. Imagine, dear brethren, if such a transgressor is there, if such an unfaithful person is there on the divine nature, what will be the condition of this world? Today, just because of uh, Satan, a single transgressor, there's a lot of trouble in this world for 6,000 years. So many people are so fed up, they commit suicide. In the end of life, they don't want to have this life. Imagine if there is a person of immortal nature uh, sinning against God, uh, just imagine the magnitude of uh, evil that can be caused. Therefore, it is beyond rectification. Hence, God decided, if somebody has to be given the nature, if somebody has to come to the divine nature, they have to first prove their faithfulness. Where they have to prove the faithfulness in whichever stage they are, and then only if they pass, the reward can be given to them. Now, okay. Now, when God decided to give this nature to somebody, to whom did God decide? You see, whom did God decide to give this first opportunity? Imagine that you are the richest person of your country. Okay? And you got a lot of property. Now, you want to give the power of attorney for all your property. Now, whom will you give? Will you give it to your uh, manager uh, or a personal secretary? No. If you have a son, we will give it to him. Why? Because being a son, you will remain faithful to us. Uh, similarly, dear brother, when God decided to give this divine nature to somebody, he decided to give to the only begotten son who was faithful to God in all things. Whatever first opportunity Jesus was given, in all this opportunity, he had proved faithfulness to God. So, God decided to give this opportunity to Jesus. Read Colossians 1st chapter 16 to 18. Colossians was 1st chapter 16 to 18. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be in thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. 17. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. 18. And he is the head of the body, the Christ, whom is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminences. Ah, that in all things he might have the preeminence. That in all things he might have the first opportunities. That in all things he might be the first. So Jesus had proved to God that he would remain faithful when he was given all the first opportunities. Hence God gave this first opportunity to Jesus. And Jesus, uh, you see, when he came to this earth, uh, you see, what was uh, his heart condition? Psalms 40, 7 and 8. Uh, Lo, I come, O Lord. In the volume of book it is written about me. You see, to do thy will, O Lord. That was Jesus' heart condition. Jesus never wanted to be great, but he wanted to do his father's will when he came on this earth. Therefore, when Jesus came, you see, dear brethren, he remained faithful to God because of the joy that was set before him. You see, read Hebrews 12 to sister. Yes, brother. Hebrews 12, 2 and 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was sent before him endured the cross, despising the shame 
and in set down at the night at the night hand right hand of the throne of the okay so here it says jesus for the joy that was set before him endured the cross what was the joy the joy was to do the father's will hence jesus laid down everything dear brethren so jesus was given the first opportunity and he proved faithfulness to god okay now god had made also another plan what is it he not only wanted jesus alone to be on the divine nature but along with him he wanted 144000 brethren also to be with jesus on the same nature read romans 8:29 Romans eight twenty nine. For whom he did foreknown, he also did uh, predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Ah, you see, what did God decide? God had decided before only it seems that Jesus should be the firstborn among many brethren. So there should be many brethren. Along with Jesus, and Jesus should be the first for all this, brethren. It seems, and dear brethren, now let us think a little bit. You see, in the place of God, we will let us stand in the place of God and think. First opportunity was given to Jesus. Now this opportunity to be the brethren of Jesus, to whom can God give? You see. who can be given this opportunity to be partakers of the divine nature can god give it to the angels you see yes god can give it to any creation but there was a condition now, what is that condition the condition is that they had to prove their faithfulness until death that means what you see that means they have to bear all the sufferings they have to bear all the persecutions you see and remain faithful to god unto death and be the copies of jesus christ now let us think can this one be given to angels if it has to be given to the angels angels have to suffer persecution and remain faithful to god until death for this one first of all there should be a condition of hatred selfishness strife ego among the angels now is there such condition is there a condition of sin you see and since result uh, hatred selfishness persecution among the angels no dear brethren there is no such condition among the angels since uh, god did not give this opportunity to the angels but he had shown the wages of sin is death and death means pain sorrow suffering everything in earth among mankind therefore god decided you see the brethren that he would select this class from mankind and not only that one dear brethren the testing of jesus loyalty is death and his resurrection will be in connection with uh, sin and its result death and that he might also serve as an example for the other members of the new creation just see dear brethren and think the wonderful plan of god which god has made for us you see he has not even offered this uh, chance to the angels but he has given to people like us Well, what type of people has God selected? Just think. You see, what does Apostle Paul say? Read First Corinthians, first chapter, twenty-six and twenty-seven, sister. Yes, sir. First Corinthians, first twenty-six, twenty-seven. Apostle Paul says, "For a see your calling, brethren, that not many wise men after the flesh, not many might, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen." the foolish things of the world and the weak things of the world you see he has chosen the weak things of this world not the wise you see 
He has chosen who were nothing in this world, the foolish, the base, the weak things. And God has given this wonderful opportunity and promised to give us the divine nature, the nature which he himself is having. Dear brethren, just think about this marvelous grace of God. What manner of love, you see, dear brethren, which God has shown upon us. This is really a tremendous grace of God. You see, we can't really comprehend this one, dear brethren. What did the Apostle John say? You see, John said in 1 John 3, 1, you see, Be what free. manner of love has the Father bestowed upon us. You see, we can't uh, comprehend completely this love, dear brethren, because he has called us as his sons, who? Sinners, dear brethren, there was no rule, you see, that God, you see, should save mankind when uh, Adam sinned, when we are all condemned to death. But it is out of his grace, you see, that uh, he sent his son, you see, that he came and died for us and given us a chance to become like Jesus. This is not a simple thing. Nobody would do it. Just imagine when you're going on the road, if there is a beggar, you see, he comes and begs and tells, Oh, sir, please help me. I haven't ate food for seven days. I'm really angry. Please help me. How much would we help him? We will just open a purse and the least amount what we have, that one only we will give. We won't give a hundred dollar note, uh, you see, for him. Oh, please uh, have food. Uh, stay satisfied. Uh, nobody would do it. Uh, dear brethren, but see God, uh, we were sinners. We were alienated from God. We were living in a beggarly condition. You see, God gave his best and the greatest price for us. He never gave the least thing for us. He gave his best for us. And not only that one, dear brethren, is giving us his best nature, the same nature which he himself is having to us. Dear brethren, just think about the mighty things which God has created. Just see the wonderful countless stars in the solar system. The scientist says, uh, dear brethren, that all these things, uh, you see, all the stars uh, which we see are actually sun. And much larger than our sun. And God calls all these stars uh, by names. He controls all their moments, dear brethren. What wisdom God must be having. Sister, read Psalms 147, 4 and 5, sister. Yes, brother. Psalms 147, brother. 147, 4 and 5. Yes, brother. Psalms 147, 4, 5. He tells the number of the stars. He called them all by their names. 5. <clears throat> Great is our Lord. And of great power, his understanding is infinity. You see, God calls each and every star by name. We don't even remember the phone numbers of our brethren. God calls the infinite count of stars. His name, each and every star, dear brethren, compared to all such mighty creations, dear brethren, what is man? Man is nothing before him. See, that's what David says, Psalms 8 chapter, verse 3 and 4, sister. Yes, brother. Psalms 8, third and fourth verse. When I considered my thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, fourth, what is man that thou art mindful of him? and the son of man that do visitest him. You see, David said, when I consider the heaven, the sun, moon, stars, what all things you have created, God, what is man that you should be concerned about him? Tebhudran, such is the greatness of our God. But our God, you know, Tebhudran, you see, he's so humble that he gave his son for us. As 
were all considered as drop of water in a bucket. A small dust, a weightless dust of the balance. Read Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15 and 17, sister. Yes, Read first, 15 yes. first, then we will see 17 later. Yes, brother. Isaiah 40, 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he, he taketh up the Isles as a very little things. See, all the island before God is just a little thing. All the nations are just like a drop of water, it seems to be. We are like dust in the balance. If somebody really bother if there is a dust in the balance, if somebody really bother if a drop of water just falls from the bucket, no, dear Putran. In all our pomp, glory, wealth, knowledge, the Bible says we are nothing before God. Dear brethren, at least this is a better comparison. But read verse 17, we are really nothing and nothing before God, it seems. Read verse 17. 40, 17. All nations before him are as nothing. And they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. You see, he says, everything is nothing and we are counted to him less than nothing. Dear brethren, let us translate this verse for a mathematical calculation. Nothing means what in mathematics? Zero. Less than nothing means less than zero. Dear brethren, is there something less than zero? Yes, there is something less than zero in mathematics. Minus value. Dear brethren, we are in the sight of God, you see, in minus. But see the grace of God, see his mercy. He has saved us, he has justified us through his Christ and given us the opportunity to be partakers of divine nature. Dear brethren, that is his grace, that is his mercy. Dear brethren, see, just think about the creation of God. If God is going to give us this wonderful opportunity, responsibility to rule as God, is it so easy? No, dear brother, the bitter herbs are necessary in our life. See, God has called us to be with Jesus and rule for a thousand years. And do what? What is the church going to do with uh, uh, Christ for a thousand years? They are going to be judges, priest, and king. Now what does the judge do? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6 2 that the church is going to judge the angels. If we are going to judge the angels, dear brethren, imagine what type of judgment we should be having. Dear brethren, there should be no injustice or partiality in judgment. This character we need to develop now itself. A priest, what was the role of a priest? The priest was supposed to be sympathetic, draw the people towards God and help them to overcome their weaknesses. Dear brethren, this is how our high priest is there. Read Hebrews 4 chapter, sister 15 and 16. Yes, brother. <clears throat> Hebrews 4. 15, 16. Yes, brother. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. 17. Let us, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Ah, you see, our high priest, uh, you see, how is he? He is, uh, understands our infirmities. He helps us to overcome. This is the way the future high priest also should be there. 
You see, we are all going to be part of the Thai priest. We need to be sympathetic with the world. And how do we grow sympathetic? It is only through these trials. And the last uh, thing the church is going to do with Christ is be kings. Kings is what? Uh, rule with pride. Uh. No, rule humbly. But yet, uh, strictly. So these are the characters which the church should develop on this side of the veil. Therefore, there are severe trials in our life. Now, what is the use of it? To get the question, first of all, we should see the life of Jesus. Did Jesus have sufferings? Did God permit trials in his life? Yes. If yes, then we need to seek the answer why God permitted. Then we will get the answer to our questions. Read Hebrews 2.10. Hebrews 2.10. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom all are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Mm. You see, Jesus was made perfect through suffering, sir. Does it mean that Jesus was imperfect? No. Jesus was made suitable for the divine nature. How? Through suffering, sir. If Jesus himself was made perfect through sufferings, dear brethren, do you think that we should not have any trials, sir? And sufferings in, a G in our life is also very, very important. Okay, read Hebrews 5.8. Hebrews 5.8. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Mm. You see, though he were a son, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Does it mean that Jesus was disobedient? No, dear brother. Jesus was obedient to God always, but uh, his obedience in heaven was in a different condition. When everything was favorable to him, but when he came to this earth, it was totally opposite. All the conditions were unfavorable and everybody was against him. It is in this condition that he proved faithfulness to God and he learned obedience. If Jesus who was already obedient had the necessary, you see, of these trials and sufferings in his life, then how much more we were always disobedient to God. Isn't it, dear brethren? Therefore, this suffering is uh, important for us. Read Hebrews 2.17, sister. Hebrews 2.17. It says, Wherefore, in all things, it behove him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sin, sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them, them that are tempted. See, through suffering, Jesus is able to help and sympathize with other sufferings because he himself has undergone the same experience. Similarly, dear brethren, we need to understand uh, the world uh, sufferings and help them in the trials. Uh, you see, it is very important that we have trials and sufferings in our life. Uh, therefore, the new creatures are tested with fiery trials, so they are prepared to the glories to follow. That when they judge the world, they may know how to sympathize uh, with them, dear brethren. Uh, so all the adverse circumstances in our life uh, are used by God uh, to develop the desired fruit of patience, mercy, kindness, you see, faith and love. Therefore, nothing to this new creature is an accident. You see, everything is monitored and permitted by God for their welfare. Even such that the very hairs of their head are numbered. Jesus told in Matthew 10, 13. Normally, if a hair or two falls from our head, we won't really care. We won't really worry. But God keeps notice, takes notice of all these little bit things means each and everything you see in our life is monitored and supervised by God. 
Dear brother, in the smallest things which we usually neglect, even those things are monitored by God. So, if we are suffering from pain, sorrow, sickness, poverty, if we have these bitter herbs in our life, we should remember that all these are permitted by the Lord for our good. Hence, all the sufferings in our life is the bitter herbs that are very, very necessary because of which only we partake more of that meat. You see, more of Jesus. Dear then, if we are suffering from poverty, financial disaster, you see, sickness, isolation, depression, we should think why God has allowed such a situation in our life. If God wants, he can give us whatever he wants. He is the master, he is the creator of this universe. All the things that are in, in it, it is his. He can give a lot of money, but if he doesn't give, then uh, there must be a reason. You see, he being a father knows what best is in our life, what is suitable for us. His wisdom is far superior. He knows what is good for our spiritual growth, dear brethren. Suffering on a part of a Christian is a compulsory condition. See what Jesus said. John 16, 33. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You see, what did Jesus say? You shall have tribulation. Not that you may have, probably have, no. He says, you shall, that is the condition, compulsory condition. But all these sufferings, no need to worry. What did Jesus say? Huh? What did Jesus say? No need to worry. Because God has promised that uh, I have overcome. You see, be of good cheer. I will help you also to overcome. Read 2 Timothy 3.12, sister. 2 Timothy 3.12, ye, and all that will live godly in Christ. Jesus shall suffer persecution. Ah, all those who shall live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. Because by seeing our character which is totally against that of the world, the world will rebuke us, reprove us. Therefore, they will hate us and persecute us. But these are the marks of Jesus in our life. They did not leave the master. They called him Beelzebub and persecuted him. Jesus said, the servant is not above his master. If they hated him, they will also hate us. This is the bitter experiences which are much required in our life. Read Romans 8, 17, sister. Romans 8, 17. And if children then hears, hears, Hear of God, the joint hears with the Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Ah, this is the condition. If you have to reign with Christ for a thousand years, then suffering is must. You see, we should suffer not because of our wrongdoings. Sir. You see, we should suffer by doing the will of God. God will protect us and guide us in all our ways and be with us and not permit us to be tested beyond the our limit. But he would open a way, you see, as uh, there are trials. Uh, you see, David, and all these things are uh, chiseling work, you see, which are developing us and preparing us for the future temple. Remember the temple construction of Solomon? The Bible says that uh, each and every stone was prepared uh, outside uh, in the quarry itself. Uh, once it was uh, placed in the temple, there was no hammer used, you see, to actually to place the stones in a particular place. Everything was prepared outside. This says, you see, this signifies actually each and every church member are completely developed where? Outside, here itself, not beyond the veil, on that side of the veil. Uh, read First Kings 6 7, sister. First Kings 6 7. And the house, when it was in building, was built of stone, made ready before it was brought thither, so that there was neither hammer nor axe, nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in building. See, no sound of a hammer or axe 
was heard while in building. Dear brethren, so whatever trials we need to shape ourselves, God knows. So it permit everything now itself. Therefore, this bitter herbs is very, very important. Or else, how do we have that uh, urg, you see, appetite to eat that uh, meat? You see, that bitter herbs creates the appetite to eat the meat more and more and get more strength. You see, different. similarly, these bitter experiences are like a chiseling work on this side of the veil. Because without this, how can we attend the divine nature? So this is very, very important, dear brethren. Therefore, this is a compulsory condition. You see, we just can't eat the bread. We need to drink the wine also. So, wine and bread are very, very compulsory. Dear brethren, so in the end, we will just see a small story. Once, uh, there was a sister, you see. And uh, she was much uh, uh, worried about her cross. You see, once she went to a convention, she saw many brethren coming uh, very, very grandly decorated, wearing good clothes and everything, coming in car, coming in vehicles, having fellowship to everybody. But see, this sister was very poor. She came in a simple attire, you see. And uh, she could not... Uh, uh, face uh, anybody, she could not speak to anybody because she felt so bad that uh, God has done injustice to her. So she's so poor and uh, compared to other people and she felt uh, that her cross is too heavy. Alone, nobody with her, not much blessings, lot of poverty, lot of trials. So, she sat in a corner and began to weep. You see, and uh, she had a dream. You see, the dream, she was actually crying uh, the same way. The angel came from heaven, you see, and the angel asked her, Why, child, what happened? Why are you crying? Then she said, Oh, Lord, what can I tell? My cross uh, is not a good cross. Uh, I don't want this cross. Uh, this cross is not good at all. See, other people, they're having good crosses. You see, they're all having wealthy crosses, uh, healthy crosses, uh, good crosses. God has done injustice to me. I don't want this cross. Uh, then angel told, oh, is it? This cross is not good. Okay, don't worry. Come, I'll take you to the world of crosses. So he took her to the world of crosses where a lot of crosses was there. It seems everybody's cross was there only. So she felt very happy. So many crosses are there. Ah, okay. Then angel told, okay, go, go. Whichever cross you want, you please pick it and come. That one only, I'll give it to you. Then she went inside. She began to walk and saw one cross. It seems that cross was Sister so and so, oh, wealthy sister, you oh, oh, she usually comes in a car, you know, having, uh, you see, grand dress, uh, wealthy, she's very, very rich. Uh, this cross is very good. Then she began to lift the cross, she's not able to lift at all. Why? It was a cross of diamond and gold. The weight was so heavy that she could not lift it at all. She tried her best, then she said, Ayo, this cross, who can carry pa? I am not able to lift at all. Then she left it there only. Then further she went. She saw a cross full of roses, full of flowers. She felt so happy. Ah, this is the correct cross. Ah, nice smell. Full of roses. Ah, very soft. So then as she carried the cross, the thorns began to prick it. Then she felt, oh, this is the cross of that sister, no? Uh -huh. See, she is having a very soft cross. So, but when the thorns began to prick, she kept it down. She realized, no, 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 I can't carry this cross with thorns and all. I want a very simple cross. Then uh, she left the cross. So, similarly, she went everywhere. She tried all the crosses. Ultimately, you see, none of the cross uh, suited her. Then she came back at the entrance. They began to sit and started crying. Cried, cried, cried. Then the angel came and asked, Now what happened? Why are you crying? No, I went and saw all the cross. So many crosses are there. None of the cross is suitable for me. Then he told, Okay, don't worry. I will go and get a cross for you. Then the angel went and brought a cross, which is very light. 
a simple wooden cross with nothing in it he gave it to her she carried it and she felt rejoiced oh this cross is very good huh? uh, this is what i wanted no uh, where did you keep this cross uh, then she told i'll take this one and it okay you can take ma this is the cross you wanted no you can no problem you can take it then before going the sister asked him no whose cross is this one the angel said this is your own cross so then only the sister realized are re this is my own cross ah i did not realize at all similarly of the everybody will have crosses in their life we feel the rich the wealthy they have everything they were and they have their own responsibilities we feel somebody are very comfortable outward but they have their own thorns let us not compare our crosses with others because god is not going to compare our crown with others he's got a crown for us what did apostle paul say you see ah huh? god has reserved a crown not only to me but all those two are faithful to god so with this uh, thoughts dear brethren let us uh, remain faithful to god until our death and let us uh, partake uh, this a uh, lot of memorial in the coming days uh, with the good spirit uh, where we are uh, given the bitter herbs uh, let us partake it uh, because that uh, helps us uh, to partake uh, more and more of the meat uh, which actually strengthens us uh, you see and uh, you see it makes us strong in the lord uh, to walk uh, to the heavenly canaan dear brethren remember the people of israel you see they actually traveled in the midnight you see huh? around around 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the noon sorry in the, in, the, in the early morning you see they were uh, cast out uh, from uh, you see egypt they were thrown out from egypt uh. dear brethren we don't know when our time will come you see but when the time comes let us uh, be prepared we need to have strength uh, energy in the lord so that is uh, uh, required and that comes only by partaking of the lord's meat that is assimilating jesus you see developing more of christ likeness in us and all these things uh, doesn't happen in a magic uh, you see all these things comes uh, through bitter experiences you know Uh, there is a proverb in the world uh, experience is the best teacher you see god permitted evil in this world experience is the best teacher which makes which actually makes us suitable to see for many more opportunities to come dear brethren may lord bless this uh, words may lord add his blessings to his understanding of his words and uh, i thank you all the brethren for uh, listening to this class and also thank the brethren for giving this opportunity may lord bless you all god bless thank you thank you dear brother raju for giving us 